weave your slipper. There you go. Way better than that. Hello yeah. yourself. <laughs> My name is Mark Christie. I'm a lifetime Laguna resident and I've known John Cunningham since I was 10 years old. My name is Peter Chang and I'm the CEO of PMMC. My name is Michelle Hunter. I'm the Director of Animal Care. My name is Jen and I am one of the Animal Care volunteers on Friday morning. My name is Casey Parlett. I come from a family of lifeguards so growing up I heard all stories and legends of John um, since the time I was a little kid. And I was just a new volunteer and I was like, oh my God, I have to work with John Cunningham. I was so nervous, but he was just so kind and helpful and just made me feel at ease working with a, a hero to everybody. He was one of my favorite science teachers. I was familiar with John and Jim when they started Friends of the Sea Line. Actually, it wasn't Friends of the Sea Line. It was just two guys with a backyard pool and, and uh, they were rescuing sea lions got to be 40 years ago. Every time he walks around, people gravitate toward him. He's a walking inspiration on so many different levels. I mean, from what he started with the students digging out the pools to professionally uh, built pools with filtration systems, I just love watching his face. And he's so proud, but he is yet so humble with everything he has accomplished. And he was like Superman. Nice day for them. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, what a great send-off, huh? They always say you don't want to meet your heroes, but in John's case, it's uh, he definitely lives up to the legend. He taught this insane class. And Mr. Cunningham taught survival, and it was the class to be in. John was outdoors. He wasn't an indoor guy. He would get you outdoors. He would push you, push you harder than you thought you could go. Thing. Everybody would be standing on the balcony looking over at the pool with these seniors and their jeans tied up as flotation devices. He would go back into the giggle crack, which is this surging tidal flow in and out, and it's just boiling out like a washing machine. And he would go back there and he would go unconscious. He's not really unconscious, but he would pretend to be unconscious. Naturally, he called out my name, Christy, come back here and, and swim back and rescue me. So I go back, he's face down in the water pretending to be unconscious. It was uh, a life lesson. I didn't think I could A, pull this guy out of the water, I did. Uh, he made it as difficult as he possibly could have. And I really believe that it's those kinds of lessons, those kinds of challenges that have given kind of me the confidence to go on in my life and do some things that were maybe a little bit beyond my comfort zone. Just because it's uncomfortable. Survival is uncomfortable and it compromises, you know, it just puts you in a place where you're like, I don't, I don't know. And he always helped them feel safe. And that was one of the things that I was like, that's a cool guy. John has made such a profound difference in the lives of his students, the community, and all the marine mammals that have passed through the big red barn doors here. What a remarkable person and what a remarkable uh, life that he's lived and the things that he's done for this city and for, for conservation work. He's just a very kind man. I don't think he realizes what an icon he is. That vision that he brought and that determination to build an organization that met an unmet need back when there was no organization of its kind. But literally, like a teddy bear, like a grizzly with, you know, this, just these, these kind eyes. I'd, I'd like to thank John directly for everything he's done for me, as well as everything he's done for this community and for the Marine Mammal Center and conservation work. If I were to think about how he lived his life and how he just tackled adventure and he moved forward, um, it's, it's impressive and it makes me feel like I could do more. It's absolutely been uh, a truly a pleasure and an honor to continue his dream. That's something that we're, we're constantly trying to live up to, is the work that he started. Thank you, John, or as I would have called you, Mr. Cunningham. Um, you've been an important piece of so many people's lives, starting from when we were in high school and beyond. And I'm sure that you don't know how far your reach is for kids. And then to reach beyond that and look at the work you've done here at the Marine Center, I just thank you. John, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for welcoming me into your organization and being there as just a, a beacon of hope for the future of these animals and made me feel inspired to continue with your mission. I thank you and I love you so much, Sean. You've been doing chasing you all morning. Yes. <laughs>
JC, uh, thank you for being a mentor, thank you for being a friend, thank you for being a game changer and an inspiration in my life. On everyone's deathbed, they're going to be looking back at the, you know, maybe it's a handful of people uh, that have really had an impact in their lives. And I can say without hesitation that you, John Cunningham, have been one of those game changers for me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So I feel, however, that we always need to keep in mind what our role has been in changing the environment, and that we constantly need to monitor what's happening, and uh, this is just one way of doing it.